Okay, hello everyone, this is Ehab. Today we are going to talk about hello words and um, error checking. So the hello word in C++ um, is a simple program that is used to verify the programming um, environment and the project is set up correctly. So we use it because it's a simple um, project. Um, it's a quick and saves some unneeded headache. Um, even if veteran programmers continue um, this practice with the start of each project because they want to check is everything working correctly and this is the main reason of hello world so hello world code um, looks like this um, you're going to find some include statements at the beginning at the top of your code then using namespace stds we are going to talk about namespace later today and you're going to find the main function the main function is the start of your program so every program must have a main function why because the compiler when the compiler starts executing your code it goes directly to the main function and start executing from the first line so this is the first thing the compiler would see so if we run this program um, you're going to find it printing hello world printing hello world so we are going to talk about all these things lecture by lecture so when you see something in green in here those are um, words or statements following the two forward slashes those are comments comments are not included in the compiled code so when your compiler you know from cs110 um the building process also we are i'm going to mention that today um, you know that um, your source code, this is your source code, it's going to be converted into a machine code or to be more accurate into an object code, into an object code. So those green lines, those comments are not going to be included in the compiled code. So why do we have them? Why do we have them? because we want to explain something so when i open my code again or uh, if i give it to someone else um to use they're going to understand what that line of code means so this line of code see is um okay why do i include iostream because it's needed for the c out c out is going to be in here which is sending those characters to the console so compile means to translate our program or source code into a machine code or as i as i said to be accurate into an object code not a machine code but for simplicity we use um the language of machine code also one line comment is going to be started with two forward slashes like this one but if i have multi-line comment multi-line comment it's going to be enclosed with those things so everything i have in here multi-line comments are going to be enclosed with a forward slash asterisk and when i end the comment i end it with uh, asterisk and forward slash anything in between is going to be a comment so a comment is not included in the compiled code so we said the main is the starting point of our code so when the com when you run your code the compiler is going to search for the main once the main is being found the compiler is going to start executing from the first statement so anything anything inside those two curly braces is called a is called a block a block if that block if that block belongs to a function like main function it's considered the body of this function the body of this 
function. So when something belongs to something else, we usually indent that. As you can see, there is some indentation in here. So the styles we have in C++, if something belongs to other thing, is to surround it with curly braces, curly braces, curly braces. Now, whether you have the opening curly brace, this is the opening curly If you have it after the uh, one line after the function declaration, this is called function declaration. I'm declaring that I have a main and the main is returning in. We are going to talk about the return value in a second. But the styles of having um, curly braces is the opening curly brace to be added one line after the function declaration or next to the function declaration. Now you can choose any of these two and that is going to be okay. So in here you can see I have a very bad style. A very bad style is going to have everything packed in one line. Now there is a big difference in C++ between a line and a statement. A statement ending with a semicolon. We are going to talk about that ending with the semicolon. I can have multiple statements in one line. This is an example of that. I have the opening declaration of the function opening braces and the first statement, second statement. As I see that the statement ends with a semicolon. So you can have as much statements as you want in one line. As long as you separate your statements ending them appropriately which is by ending them with the semicolon. Semicolon, semicolon, then don't forget to close the um, your body. Closing your body with a closing curly brace. Now the thing is, we don't prefer having such thing. We prefer having them in multi-line. We prefer having every statement in a line. Don't have statements, multiple statements in one line. We don't like that. So the main promises, promises, when you declare the main function, you promise that you're returning an int. What do you mean by that? I'm returning an int, which is going to represent the code, the code returned to the user after I'm done executing everything. So I executed this, I executed this, if I return zero, that means I ended the whole body without any errors, with zero errors, zero errors. Otherwise, if something wrong happens in this line, for example, or in this line, this the compiler is going to return, automatically return the error code. So, returning zero, this is, this means that we kept our promise by returning zero, which means no problems. Okay, so this line, this line is using C out. So the whole line in here is using C out. C out is outputting its um, abbreviation of character output. C from character, out from output. This is outputting whatever followed to the console. To the console. The backslash n is adding a new line. You're going to see that in lecture 2. So let's break down these parts of this statement. So the statement is C out, which is, stands for character output. Then the insertion operator, which inserts whatever following that operator into the C out, put into, put this statement into the C out. Then we have the statement we are putting into C out. And if 
it's a string a string is a series of characters surrounded by quotes double quotes double quotes opening double quote closing double quote and this is for a string because we have something else single quotes this is for a character and you cannot have more than one alphabet on or one digit or one special character inside so you have only one if you have single characters if it's double uh, sorry if it's a uh, single quote if it's double quote then it's a string then you have this semicolon every c++ statement ends with semicolon now this is true to some extent if you have a statement if you have a statement then it ends with a semicolon. We are going to have in lecture three um, conditionals, and we are going to see that those are not ending uh, ending with semicolon. They are uh, opening and closing braces. It's like when we define the main in here. See, it's not ending with a semicolon. It's ending with opening brace because they have blocks which is something different okay so right now right now pause the video and follow these slides so if you're using C, uh, Visual Studio 2015 or 2017 skip to slide 24 but if you're not if you're using 2019 then open the Visual Studio 2019 and do what I'm going to do. So open start and you can start typing Visual Studio and here is the 2019. I'm going actually to create two projects for you, one in 2017 and one in 2019. But first I'm going to start with the 2019. So I click on that. now I have this window I have this window now I can create a new project creating a new project and I look for C++ once you look for C++ you will get this empty project in C++ or console app in C++ what we want is a console app in C++ double click on that once you double clicked on that, then this window appears. And here you can write your project name. Project name, call it my first project. My first project. Now, you, if you want to change the location, you can change the location in here. You can put it wherever you want. I'm not going to change the location. I'm just going to hit create. Then it takes a few seconds to set up your project. As you can see, it's creating the project. Once everything is set up for you to be able to um, write your own code, things are going to show how. You can see this is still creating in here in the bottom. Creating and blah, blah, blah. Once it's ready, it's going to write ready. So right now, I'm not ready to create um, to type in my code I can start typing my code but you cannot run a uh, you cannot run your code yet it's going to show um, ready um, after you start um, sometimes sometimes for some project it's not going to show ready it's just going to say creating project project creation successful instead of ready depending on which version of Visual Studio you're using. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, so I did that. If I run that, this should say ready when this, uh, this is the, the build is successful. The build is successful, not the running the project. As you can see, it shows ready once the project is ran and everything went perfectly without any problems so let me just create a problem i'm going to use 
cut, but cut is not a thing in C++. So once I started that, it's going to say, okay, there is something wrong. So the building failed. So I say, no, show me what went wrong and says, okay, cut. When you double click, that takes you to the line. See that? Take you to that line. And it says in here, line eight, line eight in this file. Where's that file? this file in your source code. If you double click and went to line eight, then here is the cut. I don't know what is cut. So that was actually C out, C out. And now we run it, fix the problem. Yes, it's fixed and everything is perfect. And we see hello world. Okay, I'm going to do that also with Visual Studio 2017. I'm, I'm going to show you how to create a Visual Studio 2017 project. So we are opening 2017 of the Visual Studio and I'm going to go to file and you can see that in the slides and actually slide. So skip that, that, that. So now once you're done with 2019, go to slide 39. If you are not doing 2019 and you will start it with 25, you are going to see explanation of how to create a project on 2015. I'm going to create one or 2017. I'm going to create one in 2017. So file, um, new project. Then there is a pop-up window. I look at Visual C++ and make sure you have Visual C++. Then choose Windows Console application. Write whatever. My first application. Then you can also change the location of your project if you want. I'm not going to do that. So, okay. Now you're going to have this creating your project and wait a few seconds now the creation of the project is going to be um done um it's taking a few seconds okay we are done the main difference in 2019 is that you won't have this header file you won't have this header file now I'm just going to say what is this header file and this this header file in 2017 is basically saying that okay see the following include statements if you include libraries if you include libraries and you wrote, you um, built this li libraries you uh, compiled this library this tells the compiler do not recompile them again so you save some time you can find it in header files in here see that this is what um it says that says okay add headers that you want to pre-compile here if you want to pre-compile libraries or if you don't want to pre-compile them you can just add them in here in your source code and the compiler is not going to recompile them your source code, this file can be found in also source file in here, in here. So you can run it the same way you run everything. And this is going to um, have, uh, there is a window is going to pop up. This window popped up and flashed, disappeared. How do I keep it? I keep it by system pose by system pose now wait a second what is system pose it's not being recognized now std system pose is not going to solve that also for you so what to do is using namespace std and now you have pch.h, you have using namespace std, you have, and actually if you added using namespace std, you won't need that anymore. It's going to be recognized. The compiler is going to recognize it. Now, um, system in all small letters is going to solve that for you. 
Now, system is going to ask the operating system to pause that for you. And it's actually going to pause that. You can uh, make this disappear by uh, pressing any key. Now, if I commented that, you're going to see some errors uh, in here. So I run it, it's going to say, okay, wait a second, I do not recognize the C out. I can recognize the system, but I do not recognize the C out. Now, either you do SCD, which is going to only, only recognize the C out right now. And this is not optimal, because if I wrote another C out, like, um, e -hub, then this is not going to be recognized. But if I have this, it's going to recognize every C out, because this means okay if you did not recognize anything like c out go to look in the standard libraries i include this is standard library and i'm saying okay you will find it in the standard library namespace the the realm the world of the standard libraries which is i i included one of them so see a compiler finds this not recognizing this okay Go to find it in any of the standard libraries I included. I included that in here. Okay, now that shows you how to do that in both um, Visual Studio 2019 or Visual Studio 2017. Going back to our slides, um, this is how we run the program. And I just included some things. I uh, produced an error so you can see it. And one more thing I want to mention that if you're working in 2017 in 2017 this this header must be this one so in some other and some other um, versions you're going to see this is different like STD um, AFX but this is wrong because this does not match this one so you go to your source code and make it match it's PCS because it matches this one right now it works fine okay going back to our slides so because I want you to play with the um, uh, I want you to play with the errors so you get the better knowledge of errors I included some things in your modules. So when you go to your modules, modules, this is going to show you the modules you have. And there is a document in here. Here is message activity. Go to there, download that. And once downloaded, once this is downloaded, open that. Click on it. It's going to be opened. So you should have the word, um, Office application so you can have it so copy each error uh, copy each code copy that and if you're using Visual Studio 2017 um, like this one how would you um, know this is 2017 you would have header files if you go to 2019 the 2019 version there is no header files in here empty so if I open that and copy that into Visual Studio 2017, you should use one, by the way. Do not install 2019 and 2017. I would recommend that you only use 2019 because everything else I'm going to be using 2019. I'm just going to show you if you copy that because it includes that, it's going to be working. But because um, we commented the IO stream, which is um, needed for the C out to work, you're going to see what that errors mean. So that error say, okay, this is undeclared identifier. So I do not recognize. The compiler says, I do not recognize C out. So you would look, okay, do I have using namespace C? Yes, I do. But wait a second. I say, if you don't recognize this, go to search in the sound libraries I included. But the sound libraries included um, does not provide a library use, which is the ice stream, used for the C out. So, include the ice stream. Now try it.
and that should work and worked now I'm going to close the 2017 I'm going to close the 2017 and I'm going to only work on the 2019 so I'm going to include that for you I'm going to keep that in there not touched but once you copy the code go to Visual Studio 2019 and Ctrl A, like remove everything, then paste this code. Paste this code, and since we're using 2019, delete this one. You're going to delete this one. Now your code is good for 2019. And you should know why if you watch the previous minutes in this video. So, here it is. Here it is. A code that should work in 2019 and for the same reason um, CR is not recognized I double click on that and say CR is not recognized but I have using namespace std which is needed to say the compiler um, go and search for the um, in the libraries I included uh, the compiler search in CSSC lib but doesn't find CR because it's in here so Take that comment, include the ice stream, make sure you um, specified everything and you spelled everything correctly. Run it on your 2019 and that will work. And that worked. Same thing with this one, this code. And I'm going to um, tr um, try a few codes in front of you so you can get them. So control A, delete that and paste. Always, since we are using 2019, this is not needed for 2020. It's not part of the practicing I'm trying to do. So this is misspelling IUStream. I said IUSteam. So let's see what error would pop up. So the error says, and the error usually um, in here, um, you would find the X in here. Um, that says, I don't foresee it as undefined, uh, undefined, but when you click at the C, the thing that start the error that starts with a C, this is the code, and this is when you said, remember when I said int says we are promising that we would return um, a code? And actually, by the way, if you did not include return zero, there is no errors because the compiler is going to add it in the modern compilers. Modern compilers would add that if you didn't return zero. Um, added, uh, add that implicitly so you won't find it in the code. I'm going to show you how once we fix this error. So CR is not recognized. Why is that? Because, because the compiler cannot find iostream, no such file. So, okay, then it should be iostream. Yes. So try that now. The error is gone and you have hello world. It's working. So um, to the point I said, you don't need this. So comment that. When you comment something, it's not going to be included in the compile code, right? It's like it's not there. It's for the programmers to read. Um, so the compiler is not seeing that. So is that going to say it's strong because you don't have um, return zero? No, everything is working. Why? Because no return zero. Okay, the compiler is going to add that. You can try that with different things. And I say um, why in here. Now you can get familiar. You should do the eight errors. Because this is how you get familiar with errors messages. And experiment that add uh, different things. Here's some other suggestions that when you break the hello world to do lines, try adding backslash t, backslash b. Um, this uh, we are going to try those actually in lecture two. Okay, um, writing your program's report. If you're doing a report and you will be asked to do a report, I'm going to do that also to explain that in the Zoom meeting. I'm going to show you that in the Zoom meeting um, on Monday. So if you do not, uh, if you did not attend the Zoom meeting, go back. I'm going to record that meeting with my students in, on Monday and I'm going to upload that for you. So go see what is the um, contents of the of your report when you're asked to do one. So it's going to be a cover page, a brief description, and a copy of your code. Or if your code is big, then um, copy the key parts of the code. Things that you think that I'm going to be 
um, interested in. Um, then a screenshots of your program's output, and in every in every program I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to actually explain what you should have in your report. Here is if you don't know how to um, take a screenshot. Here is how you take a screenshot looking for the snipping tool, and you can take the window. So I'm going to show you that live, um, if I can. Okay, here is a window. Um, run that code. Here is the output window. Then I'm going to go to start. Um, look for snipping tool. Here it is. I click in here. And I'm always interested in your whole window. So you choose window snip. Then that is going to give you a hand, a little hand like this. So click on the window you are capturing, which is the output window. And if you have a word, something like that, I'm going to paste that in here. Um, I can just say right click, paste. That pasted it in here. If you want to save that to use it later, you can save that and save it in whatever, wherever you want. Okay, uh, I'm not going to save that. Let's go back to our slides. And I just showed you these things. So um, you can practice that. And if you have questions, um, prepare your questions um, and ask them to me in my office hours. We are going to specify office hours um, on we are going to agree actually on the times that works for you and me and those are going to be officers. Also, if you have any question, do not hesitate to contact me via Canvas message. Okay, um, so you saw that we clicked on local Windows debugger and that debugger, um, that little arrow in here, ran our code. So what happened inside? Is it a magic button? What happens inside that magic button? So your source code, the English looking code, is going to be compiled. And when we say compiled, so the output is the output, the whole process is exe file, executable file. But what happens when you click run? This happens. This, the whole thing, like in here. Okay, so with compiler, your source code, your English looking code is going to be compiled. Then the output to that compilation process is going to be linked with the libraries you included to become executable file eventually. So what happens? Compiler translates your English looking code into something we call object code. For simplicity, you would find some people saying machine code, but it's actually an object code. Object code, the compiler actually checks the syntax error. The syntax is the grammar of coding. So missing um, semicolon, um, instead of having this for the C out, you just had one and you forget this one. So this is going to be checked in the compilation process. Then your object code, if there is no syntax errors in the compilation process, the object code is going to be produced. Then the object code is going to be linked with the used libraries. Remember that we included iostream? The linker is going to link the, your object code with the ostream object code to produce the executable file. To produce the executable file. And the linking process, if you have errors in there, it's going to show as linking errors, linking errors. So what that means, it means that your linker does not find the thing you try to link or you try to link something, but there is something wrong happening inside the linking process or any of these things. So how many errors do we have? We have um, various types of errors. The compile time errors, which we like, because if we have a compile errors, the compiler is going to catch them, as you can see um, in the previous um, um, example I gave you when I tried things um, in my Visual Studio. You can just double click on that error and that is going to take you to that line and the exact thing that happened. And it's actually going to provide exact um, exact description of the error. 
Like when we said, oh, undefined um, CR. We didn't, uh, the compiler didn't undefine the CR. So, linking time errors, which I personally don't like, because those are easier to find than runtime errors, but it's actually hard to deal with, if, especially if you don't know um, how to deal with your linker. Um, runtime errors, um, those are going to be only if the user entered something um, that would break your code. Something like what? Um, something like if I have um, int x and y and I have um, int sum um, or actually d for the division equal x divided by y. This is x divided by y. Now if I get x and y from the user, if the y is 0, then something wrong. You cannot divide by a 0. So your code is going to be working in all cases, but not with a 0. Let me just show you um, an example of that. Let me just close this window. Okay, um, so here is some very fast code I'm doing. And x and y. Um, I'm going to take input, so I'm going to take cn, x, um, then y. You're going to learn how to do th these things in lecture two, but something fast. Um, or, or actually, I'm going to show a message that would say, um, enter x. Um, just that. Then I ask you to enter x. Then I'm going to repeat that with y. So that would be entering y. So enter x, then enter y. I'm going to add a new line in between those two. You're going to learn that. Don't worry about this. Um, we are going to have int or double. Double d equal x divided by y. Um, then c out d. And add a new line. A new line uh, because I don't want the message to show um, then followed by press. Any key to continue? No, adding a new line. Okay, um, you can play with this, see what is going on. So, when this runs, it's going to say enter x, I enter 5. Then I enter y, enter some 6. So that shows um, 0 because um, x divided by y, int divided by int gives you int. Um, let's change these things because I want actually to show you something. Double, um, take that and run it. So we have 12, we have 15, that gives you 0.8. That gives you 0.8. Okay, that's good, but, and it worked, right? Runtime error is depending on the user input. So I'm going to ruin this for us. So 12, instead of 15 or 13 or anything, I would add y as a zero. So that is going to um, give you infinity. Now this is, this is something only works um, if you have, um, if you have and newer versions of the code. Sometimes, sometimes, and you are going to face that a lot. If you're using old compilers, they do not handle the division um, uh, correctly. So they're going to say, okay, you're trying to divide by zero and this is going to break your code. Uh, I don't know where I can find an uh, old compiler to try that for you. Um, also, something like um, if I'm adding, okay, if I have, I don't want to complicate that for you, um, this is going to be talked about when we talk about arrays, but um, just know that runtime error is um, depending on lo the logic of the code, the logic 
depends on the user input most of the time. So some great quotes from um, Jeremy Sorostrap, he is the creator of the C++, he says, um, the compiler has no common sense, it's not a human, and it is very picky about details. Since it has no common sense, you wouldn't like it to try to guess what you meant by something that looked okay for, uh, to you. This is something when we tried um, with errors, right? When we commented the I stream and um, these things. Things looked okay to us or cut because we were fast typing C out and we missed the O, so it became cut. Looked okay, we are familiar with the word cut, so that looked okay, but the compiler is going to catch that because the compiler is not a human. It's not going to mistake things. It's going to check, is it actually C O U T for the C out, not C U T? You didn't miss the T, uh, the uh, O. So when all is said and done, the compiler saves us from a lot of self-inflicted problems because the compiler is going to catch the problem and says which line and which even sometimes and which word. So the compiler is your friend. Possibly the compiler is the best friend you will have uh, in your journey of programming. So some little things about the header files. We just said that, I'm going to repeat that. But um, add some um, extra context to it. So include statement tells the compiler that we want to use something from a library. So this is actually a library. And if it's in angle brackets like iostream, it's actually a standard library. It's a standard library, which is being installed when we uh, install the C++ on our machine, like when we install the Visual Studio. If it's enclosed in double quotations, like these things, we have seen this in Visual Studio 2017, this is going to be found in our directory. And I proved that to you. Since we don't use that in header files, you won't find it in here. But if you open the Visual Studio, I'm going to open my last uh, application, you're going to see that. So what that means is that when you have something enclosed in double quotes, I'm going to prove that to you right now. If you see something in double quotes, you are going to find it in your directory and this can be um, found most of the time, depending on where you put it. Depending on where you put it. If it's under click, so this, I can see this, and I can show you where that is, but this, I cannot show you where that is, because this is in the normal place where the compiler, when the compiler set up, or when, the, when you set up your uh, environment, C++ environment, this goes to the normal place, to the um, default place, let's say. But this, I can see that. Oh, I see that, right? I see that. But I don't see where this is. So if you see something like that, you should find it in this location. Or any, uh, it could be in here, depending on where you put it. But mostly, if you want to be tidy and organized, you would put it in the header files. Okay. We said that. What about namespace? We have using namespace std. So namespace is telling the compiler, if you don't recognize something, you may find it in this namespace, in this world of words. It may be a word recognized or defined in this namespace. STD is for the standard libraries. It kind of looks like the area codes in your telephone. I can have two phone numbers exactly similar, but the difference is the area code. The area code is going to be make them different. Make them different. So I can find two of the same things. I'm going to give you an example. I can have two play functions. One plays audio player and one plays um, video player from Google, one from Google and one from Microsoft. If I want to say to the compiler, okay, go use this play. And you can see those two are exactly identical. Where you can find them 
If I want to use the Microsoft's one, I say, okay, Microsoft MS, then two columns, two columns, which gives you access to the contents of MS, namespace, and use play of that MS. If I want to use Google's play, I can say GGL if I have Google. Okay, so as I said, I uh, as I um, explained uh, while I was using the code, if you just use a CDCL like this, using a CDCL, then it's going to recognize only C out. But if I use C in, for example, to take input, X and I have X defined in here and X then this is not going to be recognized so if I want everything to be recognized I would uh, from the sound libraries I'm going to use using namespace std so usually what I tell my students what I tell my students first first make sure you have your include libraries in here include um, CSCD lib include iStream include whatever you want this is one include two make sure that you have using namespace std three make sure that you have the main and everything else in here this is how you set up your project always always make sure that okay i have my includes i have my in uh, using namespace std because this is where most students would uh fell short not having using namespace std okay now we are done with lecture one if you have any question again um save your questions since um usually we're uh, teaching online in um april of 2019 so save your questions write them down you can send me a canvas message with your question or better save it to the zoom meeting we are going to have zoom office hours where any student have a question could just jump right into this uh so for example for example if we are having a zoom meeting uh, for office hours from 10 to 12 on tuesdays for example i'm not saying that we are having that uh, because we didn't agree on that yet so if you're having that you can i'm going to be there from 10 to 12 10 to 12 you can just jump right in into the zoom meeting link i'm going to provide you uh, for this office hour and you can ask me it's going to be a little bit of a headache at the beginning then it's going to be um simple when you're done uh, with with learning these new tools because it's uh it's a change for everyone it's a change for me to set up videos um for um lectures and it's new for you to watch video instead of being face to face with your instructor okay that was a hab um see you in next lecture have a good day peace